you know, the likes of which uh, very few have ever seen before. Uh, that's Donald Trump. And, and that's, quite frankly, it's that backbone that's saving this country because without that fighting spirit, this country wouldn't stand a chance. You know what's interesting, Eric, is that for the longest time and all during the Democrat convention, it didn't matter where the looting and the burning and the chaos occurred, whether it was in Milwaukee or Portland or Seattle or Chicago or Kenosha, not one Democrat could talk about it. And now all of a sudden, apparently the numbers seem to be good now, the internal numbers, I understand, uh, for your dad. And now all of a sudden, Joe Biden uh, it wants to come out and start campaigning. And your father tweeted today. Let me let me read that tweet to you. I think we have it here. The tweet is now that Biden's polls are dropping fast, he has agreed to get out of his basement and start campaigning in 10 days. Sadly, that's a slow reaction time for a president. Our beloved USA needs a much faster, smarter and tougher response. Get out there today, Joe. Well, clearly, uh, Joe Biden is not in a position, it seems, to, to even he didn't even go to his convention to accept the nomination. I mean, does he have the stamina, forget the capacity, the stamina to actually do this judge 670 days since he's been in wisconsin that's you know his his convention was supposed to be in milwaukee it's been 670 days since joe biden has been in wisconsin it's been 171 days since joe biden's been in michigan a state that he has to win he also has to win you know wisconsin and i'm glad you're saying that about law enforcement because it it, it literally it breaks my heart to, to to see what's happened and you look at these cities right i mean first it was the Seattle and the Portland and the Minneapolis and Chicago and, and really now New York, which is terrible. But but why is no one talking about the fact you don't see Republicans protesting and picketing their convention? Why is it that it only goes one way and they'll make the Republican, the Democratic right. Party makes the Republicans out to be such, you know, terrible people that are, aren't sensitive, that are unhinged, that, you know, cling to their guns, right? They say that they're violent people because they, yeah. they, they enjoy a Second Amendment. But why is it that you don't see any Republicans in Delaware outside of their convention, you know, going up to people, you know, intimidating people as they're leaving that convention hall? You know, we, it, it, it's rather it's rather remarkable. And now all of a sudden he's behind law enforcement, as you said before, yet every single police union in this country and they don't typically endorse people. Right. They try and stay very neutral. They've all come right. out in support right. of, of my father. In fact, I was in Wisconsin last week and one of the big police unions endorsed my father. And I accepted it on his behalf. Every single police union is endorsing my father because they see the nonsense. I mean, they put on the handcuffs. These men and women well, are the greatest people we have in this country, and they could solve this problem. But, you know, they're silenced and they're, they're harassed and they're intimidated and they're bullied. And um, it's, um, it's horrible. It's yeah. horrible, Judge. I I think, Eric, I think in the end uh, that that the more this is this is going on, I mean, people literally having lunch outside or being approached by these uh, protesters, so-called peaceful, and, and, and being threatened that if they don't raise their fist or say a name, that, you know, they just won't get out of their way. This is not the America I think any of us want to live in. Final thoughts. Well, you know what? Every single one of those people, Judge, they're going to go out and vote. Every single time one of these lunatics takes a bat and breaks somebody's car window, right? Every single time you just took somebody that, you know, might have been on the other side of the political aisle and you turn them because people in yeah, this country love peace. Yeah. They love law enforcement and they're, they're not into anarchy. They're just not into that kind of anarchy. Eric Trump, thanks so much for being with us tonight. And one of the most heartbreaking moments for me this week at the convention was hearing Kayla Mueller's grief-stricken parents talk about a vicious murder at the hands of ISIS and how they felt there could have been a very different outcome. We put all our faith in the government, but the government let us down. If Donald Trump had been president when Kayla was captured, she would be here today. House Minority Leader Congressman Kevin McCarthy joins me now. You know, uh, Congressman, the the uh, the pain was palpable of the parents of Kayla Mueller, and you know they they made it very clear. They said if Donald Trump were president, uh, that that they would have their daughter back. What do you, what do you think of that? Well. There was not a dry eye when you listened to this. You felt the pain of these parents. But when you listen to what they talked about, where President Obama was given the knowledge of where they were, but he waited and she was moved. President Trump is what he always believes in, to keep Americans safe. And that means against ISIS, 
even though obama thought it was a j v team or it means be safe on the streets in america what president trump did was actually named the mission after on the birth date of their daughter and went after and made sure that they would pay the ultimate price for what they did. Exactly. He called them ahead of time. I've talked to the President Trump about this during this situation. He called them ahead of time, telling them the dates, and they said, they said, well, that's the date of my daughter. He goes, exactly. And then he called them up when yep. they had found the location and said, the mission is on. Well, uh, you know, it, it is. It, I remember the date eight fourteen. But and, and our, our thoughts and our, our, our sympathies still and compassion go to the to, to the family. But I want to talk about the convention. There apparently was no bump after the Democratic convention. Do you know whether or not there was a bump after the Republican convention? Well, what we're seeing is President Trump continues to move up. There's about four points we saw on the latest poll now moved up even tighter. And this is simply because the contrast of what you saw between two conventions. It was remarkable of, of being reminded about how great America is. It's remarkable the difference of the hatred in the Democratic convention, the, the Hollywood movie stars against the real people in the Republican convention, the real people who are extraordinary and believe America is exceptional. It's okay to love America. It's okay to understand America is exceptional. It's okay to know that we are a more perfect union who continues to strive. And it was a, it was a resounding message there. It came from every walk of life that watched that President Trump reach them the voice that no one else would listen to. Not because they're Republican, but because they're American. And he would always fight for well, them. And, and and, and some of the Democrats, and the amazing, when you think about it, Kevin, or Congressman, that, that it was during the Trump years that optimism was so high, and, and, and people felt good about their personal situations. And of course, a lot, a lot of that um, uh, has been uh, since affected by the pandemic, which I'll talk about later. But this week, Nancy Pelosi but, but uh, uh, said some yes. very strange things. I think we have the sound here. We take an oath to protect and defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And sadly, the domestic enemies to our voting system and wow. our honoring our Constitution are, are right at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue with their allies in the Congress of the United States. What do you think of that, uh, the minority leader? Well, Judge, this is no different when four years ago they called us deplorables. They call the president, they call you, they call me, they call everyone who believes like the president. Now we're domestic enemies. This is why it's so important 67 days from now, because it's not just to reelect this president, if you don't win the house as well. People need to go to takethehouse.com because we need to retire Nancy Pelosi because she's the one who led impeachment, wasted their entire majority. She's the one who continues to do this to thank the American public that Americans are domestic enemies because they don't think like San Francisco. And now they have a running mate, Joe Biden, who won't leave Delaware, who comes from the liberal edge of San Francisco. This is what we're up against. It's no longer Republican versus Democrat. It's socialism versus freedom. And, you know, with the, the announcement that was just made that the president will be going to Kenosha, Wisconsin on Tuesday, uh, what, do you, what do you think will happen uh, uh, there? Uh, the, there was a shooting there, and of course, Kyle Ritten, uh, Rittenhouse also uh, charged with a couple of counts of homicide. Well, I think what you're going to find there, people are going to cheer the president coming. That's what they expect from leaders. Joe Biden has waited all this time, night after night, when it comes to Portland or Chicago or others, be being voiceless, being voiceless when it came to their convention, not mentioning what's happened. President Trump believes in safe streets, safe neighborhoods, and he is showing up a place that Joe Biden has not been in more than 670 days, almost two years, as he's been running for president, long before COVID. This is the type of leader that we want for the free world. And you know where else? The president was just down uh, looking at the hurricane. The president yeah. went to North Carolina, where the convention was. This president is on the move every single day. On and Judge, you know him well. I've never known a man who works so hard, and he does it for no pay because he loves this country. and. He loves their people, exactly and he will listen right. to all and stand up. Yeah, it's a Kevin big contract with what this election is about. Thanks so much. All Thank right. You, Take care.
And Matt Gates and Leo Terrell still ahead tonight, but next. Can Joe Biden's one-issue strategy work in November? Peter Navarro joins me live to explain why Americans aren't buying the coronavirus criticism of President Trump.